On the line with us is Judd Legum. He publishes a, a daily newsletter that I subscribe to, and I it, it at least a couple of times a week. I read it every day, and at least a couple of times a week, it just like wow. And you you hear me quoting this all the time on the air here. Um, the today's uh, edition, I guess, would be the word was particularly interesting. It's uh, popular.info is the website uh, if you want to sign up for it. Uh, Judd, welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me, Tom. So there's something weird going on with our social media, and I, you know, I I, I don't get this whole thing. I, Facebook uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, shut down my personal account. I mean, it's just a personal account that I've had for like 15 years that I use to keep track of my family and friends. And uh, that was weird. And, and there's no way to appeal it as far as I can tell. Every Everything I've tried, you know, I had to upload my driver's license like seven times and nothing. Um, and and the same thing happened over at democraticunderground.com. They, they shut down my personal account. I don't get it. I, you know, I don't know what's going on. And then you come out with this story about how, um, well, for example, who, who is this guy, Joel Kaplan, at Facebook? Yeah, well, he's, a, he's the head of, of all uh, global public policy at Facebook, very important person, basically in charge of the D.C. office uh, of Facebook is the way to think about it. And um, really a long history as a Republican operative worked in the George W. Bush administration, and people started to become aware of him when he showed up at the Brett Kavanaugh hearing, when Brett Kavanaugh came back to testify about his um, alleged sexual assault uh, and basically sat behind him supporting him. That's fascinating. And, and, and uh, you, know, you didn't get into that so much in today's uh, edition, but um, I was reading, don't recall where now, over the weekend, that um, Zucker when Zuckerberg was in town, he had a meeting with a whole bunch of Republicans. He was meeting with conservatives. Uh, he was not meeting with liberals. And, and suddenly the, the, the Republicans have started treating him very nicely. Uh, um, and then your piece today is about how this one particular, you know, this right wing crank, Ben Shapiro, uh, who's been, you know, on the fringe of, of that movement for a long, long time. He used to come on my program back, you know, a decade ago and debate me. And now he's kind of moved on to bigger, bigger and better things, I guess, um, has this website that has just taken Facebook by storm using techniques that progressive sites have tried to use and have gotten kicked off the service for. Tell me about that. Yeah, I mean, I think what, what you referenced, there, there's a real courting of the right and the far right. Zuckerberg was actually invited a lot of these folks, including Ben Shapiro, to his home for dinner uh, in California. And uh, what my newsletter goes over today is just the extraordinary reach of this um, far right site, The Daily Wire, on Facebook. I mean, multiple, each article is getting multiples of what an article from the New York Times or the Washington Post or really any other publication. And so what, what the newsletter lays out is they're able to do this through this network of <laughs> sites of large Facebook pages that appear to be independent media sites. You know, they're called conservative news or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then, but they just keep pumping out articles from his website, which is called the Daily Wire. You're not supposed to be allowed to do this. Facebook has a name for it. It's called inauthentic coordinated behavior. Uh, and a lot of people have gotten their pages taken down for engaging this kind of stuff, but Facebook is going to let this continue to go on. Well, in fact, you know, you had graphs here showing that the, this, this right-wing website that is trafficking in misogyny and hate, essentially, has uh, a bigger reach than the New York Times, the Washington Post, Huffington Post. I, do I have that right? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it, it has almost the same total reach, but what that graph does is looks on a per-article basis, right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, New York Times has hundreds, if not thousands, of journalists churning out lots of original content. They've got, you know, maybe a couple dozen people, uh, mostly aggregating stuff, but on a per-article basis. So they almost get as much reach in aggregate, but on a per-article basis, whereas the New York Times might get, 1,500 what, what they call engagement likes, shares, or comments for an article. The, the Daily Wire averages 15,000. So it's a huge wow. difference, and it's a lot of it, you know, there, there's, a, there's a number of factors, but one of it is, is this, this network that they've established. And, and I think the broader point is that 
Facebook is kind of bending over backwards to, to cater to this section of the political debate, the far right, and and really carving out exceptions to their rules to make sure that they're not interfering with do you th them. Do you think that that might be because the only calls to break up Facebook or any of the big tech giants are coming from the left? Or could that be the, or is there some other, or could it be that Zuckerberg is, uh, you know, another libertarian billionaire? Well, we're, we're a little bit in the realm of speculation, but I'll tell you what I think. Um, I do think that first thing that you were talking about, the the real fear that this company is going to be broken up. You know, you you've probably heard the leaked audio from the Facebook meeting where he describes Elizabeth Warren as an existential threat uh, and says they would go to Matt to fight with fight her if she became president. Right, and she um, has said that and, she would break up the company or at least you know make them do, right. you know uh, let go of some of the other companies that they've acquired, like Instagram. Right, exactly. Instagram and maybe WhatsApp. Um, and so I think that my my view is, and this is a somewhat informed opinion because I've talked to other former Facebook employees who who agree with this as well, that they really think that their best chance to head this off is just by getting in good uh, with the Republicans in Congress. And that means with the Republican media apparatus in general. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's and so that's the priority. And all the policies they make are kind of to serve that objective, uh, but not necessarily, you know, what actually makes sense or what might create a coherent uh, social media platform. You know, right. we saw that with their with their policy where politicians are allowed to lie in ads, uh, and of course the. the person who's doing that the most or really exclusively on the presidential level is Donald Trump. Yeah. So. Yeah. Now that I've been uh, kicked off Facebook, uh, at least personally, um, yeah. you know, we still have a, a, a page for our show. But uh, but in any case, I, I started looking around, you know, is there an alternative? You know, I, I, there used to be multiple social media companies, you know, uh, MySpace and uh, Facebook. And I, I forget the names of them now. It's it's been a while. But it looks like Facebook really doesn't have any competition. Is that an accurate? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, if you look at the if you look at the platforms that would have been the biggest competition, uh, Facebook bought both of them. So Instagram was growing very rapidly. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and right now it has a somewhat different functionality than than Facebook, or or Facebook doesn't duplicate too much of the functionality. Mm -hmm. But it definitely could have, and it could have developed that way to be a competitor in that respect. And WhatsApp is another one. It's it's a messaging program, but it could have easily uh, been adapted uh, to take its place. So yeah, there's not a lot of alternatives, particularly because the scale is important, right? You want a place where most of the people you know you might be able to connect with, and there's right. not a lot of alternatives to that. Right. Um, last question. This has to do with breaking up Facebook. When AT&T was broken up, the uh, shareholder value was actually increased substantially. If you owned one share of AT&T mm -hmm. stock and then after the breakup you owned one share in each of the six baby or six or seven baby Bells and, and Bell Labs or, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. the, the new company, the new research arm, um, you actually saw the value of your investment go up. The same thing happened with Standard Oil. When Standard Oil was broken into 27 companies, there was almost within three year period a more than a doubling of shareholder value. Um, mm -hmm. I think you could make the argument to Mark Zuckerberg personally that if Facebook were broken up into five or six smaller companies and you still own all the stock in all those companies, you're going to see a dramatic increase in your own personal wealth. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think that's unreasonable. I think certainly if you had more competition, you would see more innovation in the way that uh, you know, the features that, that these uh, platforms are rolling out. Um, but, well, either way, I think Zuckerberg will be fine.